question. I don't want to waste much time, but I'll do my best to walk you through the salient areas where it might be very important to you to know. What does it profit a man if you gain the whole world and lose your own soul? Immigration is to see to the entry, exit, employment, residence of foreigners and enforce that law. If you have everything and you're not resident, you don't have what it takes to live in Ghana, what do you benefit? So I'll take it from where he ended, um, probably with GIPC. Um, GIPC is like a clearing house uh, where they put everything together to make things easy for you as a foreigner to know what to do at what time, up to the immigration level. Uh, so um, how much you invest will determine how many quotas. Quotas will mean how many people you can, I mean, um, employ or how many residence permits you can obtain from your investment. So the minimum capital will give you, you the investor and then your spouse and your dependents, your children. But then as and when you want to employ more, then of course you have to add more to your investment to give you more or additional, you know, foreigners to work with you. You can only do that when you have actually advertised in Ghana and you can't find a skill in Ghana, then of course you'll be allowed to bring somebody from outside. So GIPC, uh, when you register with them, the fee for the residence permit is a bit cheaper when you register with GIPC. But then if you want to bring somebody into Ghana and then you don't go through GIPC, there's something we call the web permit system. That's why you need to apply for a work permit for the person. Whoever is coming must not come into the country first. You apply for the work permit. When it is approved, then you invite the person to come in, and then we issue the person with the residence permit. Now, how many types of residence permits do we have? We have student permit. When you want to become a student, we give you residence permit. When you are an investor, you are a principal holder. You have business in Ghana, we give you residence permit. When you marry your spouse, you get residence permit. You understand? If you are an NGO or a church or anything, we give you residence permit. So we have different categories of residence permit. But please, because some people would want to outgo to the law um, to obtain residence permit, they would go after the business residence permit, which is a bit expensive. That's about $1,000. And then whether to go for the students, you know, uh, permits, that is a bit cheaper. And then they show that they are on residence permit while they are doing business in Ghana. When you are found doing that, the law will catch up with you. The law will deal with you. So don't do the wrong things. You understand? Now, let me come to the area where you can also um, change your status to become a Ghanaian. Now, we have registration by, and then naturalization to become a Ghanaian. When you are a spouse to a Ghanaian and you have lived with the, um, your husband, your, your, your spouse, a Ghanaian spouse, you would register through the Ministry of Interior to become a Ghanaian. It is allowed. And then when you have lived in Ghana for quite a number of times, the categories are there and then the requirements are there. I don't want to bore you with all those. Uh, if you live in Ghana and have I mean, work in Ghana, done business for at least 12 years, seven years, and all that. There's a requirement. You could also apply for naturalization. But what I can tell you for a fact is that you need to speak one di Ghanaian dialect fluently, without which they will not consider your application. That one, you should know how to speak one Ghanaian dialect. Now, for those of us coming from the diaspora, there is something we can do we call the right of abode. If you want to come into Ghana and change your nationality to become a Ghanaian, you could apply for the right of abode. And that one, the uh, application goes as far as the presidency. Yes, like uh, my brother said, uh, they were given the citizenship from there. So that's where Aruba comes from. And then when you are granted, you get your citizenship. You understand? There is an indefinite residence as well. 
After some time, you could apply for an independent residence. If you're a spouse to a Ghanaian, you could also apply for an independent residence. It's also allowed. So, like I said, it's not that gloomy. Uh, probably it might take some time. Or if you know how to get someone to walk you through, you could get it. And then, of course, you can own your property. Like you said, no expropriation. When you own it, nobody can take it from you. Like you said, no mortgage. You own it for good. So, uh, this is what I have to say. I don't want to, there's more. I don't want to talk too much. But what I can also say is that, please, uh, when you are coming in, and then probably are giving, uh, people make a lot of mistakes. That when they are issued with, say, five years visa or 10 years visa, they think that they can live in the country for those number of years. That's not what it means. What it means is that you can be going and be coming without recourse to an embassy in your country. When you get in, there is an immigration officer who will condition you with a stamp and a number of days. And the maximum days for foreigners is six days. Or if you don't. So when you get that, even when you have 1,000 years on your visa, please, after that 60 days or 30 days, just come to immigration office renew it, we'll renew it for you. You understand? Otherwise, when you're going at the airport and we'll see it, we'll stop you and take the penalties for it. Overstay before we allow you to go. And sometimes it's embarrassing you know, to see you go through that kind of thing. And it's not difficult. If you walk to our office, we are open. Friendship with vigilance. What do you bring vigilance? And we are friends, we are maybe our friends as well. You understand? Yes, and also, we have something we call, probably you have come, and then your visa probably is a single journey, but you want to go and come back. You still don't want to go to our embassy in your country. There's something called a re-entry visa. You can apply for it. There's one that is single journey that lasts for three months, and there's another that lasts for six months. This is for three journeys. So if you think you're going to stay more than three months in your country, then do the six months one. That can allow you for three days. You get it. So you can go and come back without any recourse to our embassy in your home country. And as you have something called an emergency entry visa. For some reason, if you think you have to come to Ghana on an emergency you know, basis, you could get somebody in Ghana to apply for you here. And then they give it to you, you can come in. But if you mean you can fly, the airline will allow you to, I mean, board a flight and you get to Ghana, you will to talk to us to know that you have an emergency, we'll still issue with the visa. It's not anything difficult, okay? Um, it is that some of our African brothers and sisters, when they come, um, they want us to give them, uh, the law doesn't really uh, say that we shouldn't give you a, a good dispensation, but they quickly want to tell us that they are African Americans, so they should enjoy everything that yes, I enjoy. That is where the problem is. <laughs> Uh, it's a problem like that, but there, there are laws, so let's go by them. Uh, they are easy. Anything you want, you can walk it through to get what you need. Thank you. We're going to take, we're almost um, um, closing this section. We've got two brief um, speakers, but we're going to take question and answer after this. We scheduled it for two hours, we can close it in two hours. At this time, we're going to call our brother to talk to us briefly about 